Hello, in this lesson we are going to look at frameworks, Bose notation. Framework is a set of light rods connected together to form a structure. Sometimes you can find frameworks in bridges or telephone towers or in roof trusses. So let's see a simple example here. This, this is a framework here. The figure below shows a light framework consisting of three light rods. That means we assume the rods does not have any weight. Lengths of the rods AB, BC and CA are 5 cm, 4 cm and 3 cm respectively. The framework is supported at A and B so that A and B lie in a horizontal line. This is a horizontal line. A load of 100 newtons acts vertically downwards at the point C. Using Bose notation, find the stresses in the rods and the values of the reactions at A and B. Note that we need to find out the st stresses. There are three rods and two reactions. Altogether five variables are to be found. Let's see the notation. Bose notation says is follows. When several light rods are pinned together and the joint is in total equilibrium or if it is not moving then the resultant force must be zero. So basically if there are three forces or more forces basically when you add them finally the resultant should be zero. This means that if we add up all the forces as vectors they must form a closed polygon. So we have two vectors and third vector is the remaining side of the triangle. If one or even two of these forces are unknown then it must be the vector which closes the polygon. If you know two two vectors and the last one is the resultant. In order to obtain the forces of each rod and the reactions we can use the Bose notation as follows. So we're going to look at how are we going to solve this problem here by using the Bose notation. First step is first label the sub regions as follows to obtain the space diagram. Basically there are spaces in between uh, forces, for example, this force and this force has a space here, and there's a space here, there's a space here. There are three spaces outside, and there's one inner space. We label this space, the space from this vertical vector to this vertical vector. This area is A, and this area is B, and this area is C, and finally your center is D. Now note that the line of action of the forces is the boundary of two adjoining regions. Basically, if you take this force R and it is it is a boundary between region A and region B. Therefore, we can represent R by the region names A and B as AB. So force R can be represented as AB because R is the boundary between region A and region B. Similarly, if you want to see the stress of this branch here, this rod here, it will be indicated by DB in the diagram. So let's see how are we going to draw the diagrams. First, we use the space diagram to, op to obtain the force polygon. So there are four spaces, three outer spaces and one in the middle. And what we know here is that there is a force of 100 newtons acting vertically downwards here. Let's try to draw the force polygon using the space diagram that we have obtained here. In this space diagram, we can see that there is only one known force, which is 100 newtons. And there are two unknown forces connected to that. And we'll start from here, which is 
100 newtons so we'll draw the force here a proportional to 100 newtons so we can take the length of this line to be equal to say 4 centimeters to represent 100 newtons and that means that AC is the load at joint C this has a magnitude 100 newtons AC because this force is the boundary between region A and region C therefore it is called AC and now we can draw a line parallel to this force from C because this one is bounded by C and D so obviously this force parallel the stress in this rod should be parallel to this rod and it should go to the letter C so it is like this C here and the next one we need to draw is the force because we are going to consider this joint here joint C now we cover two forces and the third one is the stress in branch rod AC so we'll drop a line parallel to this one going through point A because A is the other region that actually uh, the rod is bounded by region A and region D so we know A and C therefore A will be the common point for this force so you drop a line parallel to this one what happens now is that these two forces join at this point and that point is the region D so basically the force AD is the force in this rod and force CD is the force in this rod CB. CD is the force of stress in the rod CB and DA is the stress in rod CA. So we have this force polygon actually it's a triangle so far and now we need to draw a few more forces on this. We can have the force or the stress on this rod we'll bring it down there and this one should go through point D because this is bounded by D and B and it should be parallel to this line parallel and it should go through D but we don't know where it's going to finish here actually what we can see in this diagram is that this D will end at B but B is bounded by two forces R and S which are vertical so therefore we can consider that CB should be this point here uh, the point DB basically D and B because there are two vertical forces in this line first one is 100 newtons and there are two reactions R and S should come along this line here so therefore CA is 100 newtons and BC will represent BC will represent S and BA will represent R basically S plus R equal to 100 newtons if these two are in equilibrium these three forces are in equilibrium so we can write DB is the stress in the rod AB and CB is the reaction S at joint B CB is the reaction S at joint B and BA is the reaction R at joint A R at joint A okay now we have all the forces in this force polygon we'll simplify it by removing the additional lines basically extended lines and we have this triangle with some lengths known lengths now let's try to calculate the forces or stresses in each of these rods and what we can see is that this force is coming down 
therefore there will be a force going up in this stress and going up in this one basically there's a compression in these two rods and that will propagate down here will be arrowed in this way and there will be an arrow here and we have two arrows going into this node here therefore obviously there will be an arrow going out of this node for this one to be equilibrium because there are two and this should be opposite and similarly that should go to the opposite direction basically what we can see here is that the rod AB will be in tension and now we need to calculate the angle theta here for for the purpose of calculating the forces angle theta here basically this theta will represent the angle theta here because we took some parallels this parallel and this parallel here so basically this is the angle theta and we can calculate the angle theta because sine inverse theta equal to sine inverse there's a 90 degrees angle here so therefore this uh, sine inverse theta equal to sine inverse AC over AB AC is 3 is given and AB equal to 5 and if you take sine inverse is 36.9 degrees that's this angle and that angle will reflect here in this force polygon therefore if you calculate the value of AD AD is this one what we know in this triangle is the length of CA which is 100 newtons so therefore AC times cos theta AC is 100 newtons times cos theta 36 cos 36.9 is equal to 80 newtons which is a stress in AC that means AD region A and D will represent the stress in the branch AC similarly we can calculate CD this branch here this rod here and that is actually in AC sin theta AC sine theta will give CD which is equal to 100 newtons time sine 36.9 which is equal to 60 newtons that is a stress in rod BC because CD is the C, uh, region C and region D bounds the is bounded by rod CB therefore the value the length of this branch in this triangle represents the stress in the branch CB rod CB which is equal to 60 newtons okay now let's proceed further to find the remaining forces uh, what we got so far is the stress in AC and stress in BC let's try to calculate the remaining forces we have BD here BD can be calculated by AD sin theta and AD is equal to 80 newtons the stress in AC 80 sin theta will give will be equal to BD is 80 times sin 36.9 equal to BD 48 newtons P and D so actually the stress uh, in rot R dot a b is the boundary region between b and d and b therefore 48 newton is actually equal to the stress in rot a b which is a tension and also we can calculate b a is the region between b and a which is r so b a is equal to r which is actually AD cos theta AD cos theta from this triangle here which is equal to AD equal to 80 newtons times cos 36.9 newtons which is equal to 64 newtons that is the force the reaction at point A equal to R 
Similarly, we can calculate the reaction at BC at B, which is given by BC because region B and region C will meet at S here. Therefore, BC is the reaction at point B, which can be calculated simply by taking off 64 newtons, which is this length by 100 newtons. So finally, we'll end up with a value for S, which is the reaction at point B equal to 36 newtons.